Hello and welcome to Peabody TV's 15 Minutes of Fame. I'm Jackie Ankeles. This is a program where we feature different people around the North Shore area who may have an interesting hobby or a certain skill or perhaps have accomplished something unusual. Today we're going to meet Sarah Medina. She's a mechanical engineer, works at Raytheon, but today she's here in the studio for something altogether different. And she brought a little prop with her, or a big prop, I should say. Besides her job as an engineer, Sarah is a harpist. Sarah, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you Hello. for having me. Hello. This is great. Glad to see you. You know, I think a lot of people are under the impression that most of what a harpist does is play those fancy sounding glissandos. That seems to be the typical sound of a harp. Can you just play a couple of those so that we can get the idea? Sure. Love to hear that. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. And you do that with your, with your fingers only? So if I were to play a solo piece, I yeah. would do that with my fingers only. Okay. If I were in an orchestra, I would use harp picks. Oh. Sometimes. Okay. Depending on the piece. These are felt picks. They're similar to guitar picks. I have them on this elastic string so that I can keep them. You know, if I'm playing a piece, okay. I can easily grab my picks mm -hmm. and Wow, that's a huge if difference. I, yes, if I want to be heard over the other instrument. Okay, I see. What about you? When did you start to play? The harp, and why the harp? I mean, kids don't usually say, gee, I want to learn how to play the harp. So I was six years old, six. and my next door neighbor at the time was a harpist and a harp teacher. Oh, okay. I don't quite remember the day that I asked my parents, but they remember that I told them <laughs> that I would like to learn how to play that instrument that I could hear coming through her window. Did you start off with a harp? this size? I mean... <laughs> no. So typically beginners and particularly young beginners play a much smaller harp. It does not have these pedals that I'm sure we'll talk about. Instead it has levers and it's a much smaller size. Okay. So that is what I played from when I was six until I was about nine or ten. Mm -hmm. And then this is the harp that I got when I was 17. Now, what size is this considered to be? I assume there are, uh, there are several different sizes. This is a semi-grand. Semi the difference between this and a concert grand is only one string. So there's a, one additional string at the bottom oh, on a concert okay. grand. Mm -hmm. This has 46 strings. A concert grand has 47. The Major difference in size, though, really comes from the sounding board. In a concert grand, the sounding board is much wider, so you can get more sound that reverberates uh, and projects. I do play pretty loudly, and when, we, when my parents got me this harp, I had already decided to go to engineering school and not to be a professional harpist, so we felt that the right. better compromise would be to get a slightly smaller harp that is easier to move. Okay. Do you think of yourself as an engineer who happens to be a harpist or a harpist who happens to be an engineer? The former. <laughs> so I, I had a decision to make when I, when I graduated from high school mm -hmm. and I was really torn between going to engineering mm. school or going to conservatory and I decided that it would be easier to be classically trained as an engineer and then decide I also <laughs> wanted to pursue harp than to go to conservatory, get a degree right, in music right. and then decide that I also wanted to be an engineer. I so guess. I think of myself as having that engineering background first. And then right, okay. So this whole part is a sounding board? So this is the sounding board on top here. This is really the body and this is all hollow. Okay, yes. So all of the sound reverberates inside of here and then can come through these holes I here. see. These strings are all different colors, I yes. see. What is the code for all the colors? The red strings are C. Okay. The black strings, or blue on some harps, uh, black is more common, are F. And then all of the other strings are 
white. Okay. In between the red and the, the black, there are two strings. Okay. And then uh, in between the black and the red, there are three strings. So your eye can very easily tell mm. yes. where you are. So you have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then you and start over C. again with C. Okay. Now, do all harps have the colored strings? If they don't, I'm, yikes, that's like driving without road markings. How do you know where you are? So there are some harps where these bottom strings don't have these colors, but typically oh. all of the strings up here will have this color coding. There are harps made in Paraguay where the <laughs> colors are reversed. Oh no! So I know someone who plays a harp from Paraguay. I have tried to play it and the only way I can do it is to think very carefully about where to start. That's amazing. Put my fingers on the strings and then close my eyes because <laughs> the second that I look, yes. it is very difficult to yeah. undo 30 years of if training your, your with this reflex, color scheme. Reflex action. Yeah. I'd say nine out of 10, maybe 9.9 .9 people out of 10 don't realize that a harp has pedals. What do they do? So there are seven pedals. Okay. There is one for each of those notes that mm -hmm. I originally was talking about. So the C, D, E, F, G, A, B. There is one pedal for each of those. Okay. These strings represent the white keys on a piano. On the piano, you also have the black mm -hmm. keys. Those are the sharps and the, the flats. flats. So if I wanted to make a sharp or a flat and get one of the sounds of those black keys, I would have to use one of these pedals. This one on the outside is the D pedal. When I move it, it changes the pitch of all of the D strings on the okay. harp. And if I look at this D string itself, it's going all the way from the bottom here and it goes all the way up. So the string is at its longest. If I push this pedal, this disc turns and now the string becomes shorter. So it goes from this sound I and see. if I push it again, yeah. this disc will also turn and pinch the string. So I'm adjusting the length of the string I see. and I therefore see. adjusting the pitch. Yeah. What amazes me is that it would take what the pedal would take care of all the D's. Correct. That's quite a feat. And that can be a blessing and a curse. If you're in a, a piece where you're doing a key yes. change and then all of a sudden instead of having D naturals in a particular piece, mm -hmm. now all of a sudden the piece is changing and has all D sharps. You know, you just, you lock it into place and you kind of set it and forget it. You have written in your music every time, not only what notes to play, but also every time you need to move a pedal. Sometimes though, you might just have one D sharp and then yes. go right back to a D natural. Yes. So you're there using your pedals and you have to plan ahead. So you have to look, okay, you know, the next measure, I'm also gonna be using my right foot to move the C pedal. Mm -hmm. So can I move the D pedal earlier? You're kind of strategizing okay, yes. what is the easiest way to play all the notes without your feet being crazy busy the whole time. Mm -hmm. So nothing like with a piano with a sustaining or making it softer? Nothing no, like all of that is done. <laughs> softer versus louder is done with tension. So how much, you're, how much pressure you're putting on the strings and how much you're really grabbing them. Uh, and the sustainment is done, you know, when you play a note, that note will continue until you do what's called muffling. Okay. Now, even if you play a note up here, if I just m muffle these strings, it is, you can still, still hear, hear. These strings get, what, get what's called sympathetic vibrations. Oh, that's cute. Where they will also vibrate mm -hmm. by virtue of everything being connected. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. You know, I'm thinking of what it takes to tune a guitar or a violin in an orchestra. What does it take to tune a harp? I can't imagine, well, what do you do? So it takes time. <laughs> it must take time. <laughs> and you have to do it over and over again, no matter how many times you tune it, uh, it, it will go out of tune. So each string has to be tuned with a tuning key and I would put it on the string. I can make it longer. I and see. I'm tightening it yes. to make it shorter. 
And, and you have and to do that for every string. For every string, obviously. Now, what are the strings made out of? Are there a lot of choices out there? Do you have a preference? There are choices. I do have a preference. The ones at the bottom here are wire. Uh, they are the, they have the least tension, so they break the least often. The strings in the, the main section of the harp are made from animal fibers. Mm -hmm. And the top section of the harp is made from nylon. Now, I used to choose to do my entire, from here up, entirely out of animal fiber, uh, because it has a, a warmer sound. Okay. The, the nylon is brighter but the animal fiber breaks more often. I was going to ask you about how often the strings do break. That must be an issue. Yes. yes. Sometimes you'll, you'll get an advanced warning. You can see, if you look carefully, some strings maybe are starting to get thin down the bottom here, mm -hmm. or maybe where, you know, I can actually see this one, if I look really closely, is starting to just barely fray exactly where this disc pinches it. So there's pressure on it there, and it very slowly starts to wear away. You want to change it because you don't want it to break during a concert. And even if it breaks before the concert, when you very first change a string, you have to constantly be tuning it. What about carrying this thing around? Uh, let's talk in practical terms here. I know your husband did the honors today, trying to get, to get it in and out of the car. We, in fact, brought this harp to the car dealership, wheeled it into the showroom and said, uh, could we please try, you know, <laughs> test this out and make sure it fits. So we have a mattress that's about six inches thick that uh, my dad had custom made when I switched to the, the large harp. So all of these pedals go up and then they fold up so that they become oh, slightly see. more compact. Yes. Uh, it has a cover that kind of looks like a mitten. It has a special section for the column since there's hand carving that's delicate and then a special cover for the base. Then there is a two-wheel dolly. So you need to tip it this way, slide the dolly underneath. Sure, easy, easy. So your husband knows exactly what to do at this point. He does, he is my official harp carrier. Oh, okay. In, in fact, that is how he proposed to me. I was performing with the Massachusetts Harp Ensemble. Once a year, we do a show that involves a question and answer section for the audience. So he got up and he said, I have recently started carrying the harp and transporting the harp. Does anybody have any tips and tricks on how to move it? And then he asked, I have a follow-up question. How do you become the official harp carrier? And I was none the wiser. I turned to my friend playing the harp next to me and jokingly whispered to her, marry me. And then he came up on stage and Are got down kidding? on one knee. Oh, I can't and believe it. The audience must have gone wild. Yes. That it was, or thought it was planned it, or something. It was not. Uh, I was as shocked as they were. Unbelievable. Speaking about marrying, I know a lot of people like to have a harp playing mm -hmm. at their wedding ceremony. Is that something you do on occasion? When do I you do. get to play? So I play as a soloist. Mm -hmm. I do weddings. As I had mentioned before, I do also play with the Massachusetts Harp Ensemble, mm -hmm. which I have been playing with uh, since I was, I think, seven. Really? Seven years old. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we, we've been playing uh, with a local theater company since I was... 13 every year uh, and then I also play with local orchestras and bands. That's that's something you love to do and yes. I'm glad you have the opportunity. Do you ever get rusty if you don't play all the time? What suffers? Honestly I've been playing long enough that I can go pretty long stretches without practicing and pick it back up. The one thing that really you, you can't get around is your calluses. So oh. you will build up calluses over mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and those will disappear, disappear if you don't, keep if you don't practice. Okay. You're trying to build up a callus, not a blister. I see. There's a difference for sure. A very important difference. With some of these secrets of the instrument uncovered and with our newfound appreciation of the instrument, will you play a little something for us? So I can play uh, Debussy's First Arabesque. 
was ori originally written for piano and it has transcribed, um, transcribed for, for harp. harp. Okay. It is probably my favorite solo piece. Oh, it's beautiful. want to use the cliche word heavenly to describe the sound but honestly it was just beautiful sarah thank you again for coming my pleasure and that's going to do it for this edition of peabody tv's 15 minutes of fame i'm jackie engelese be sure you join us next time to find out who gets to enjoy 15 minutes of fame could be one of your neighbors bet you'll be surprised and if you know someone on the North Shore who has an interesting hobby, skill, or accomplishment, we'd love to hear from you. Just go to peabodytv.org slash 15 minutes. 